Hello and welcome to Algebra 1 Lesson 45. In this video we're going to learn about finding the LCD, that's the least common denominator, for a group of rational expressions. So now that we've mastered how to multiply and divide rational expressions, kind of the next thing we're going to learn is how to add and subtract rational expressions. Now before we can do that, we need to learn how to find the least common denominator for a group of rational expressions. So I want you to think back to when we worked with fractions in pre-algebra. And we should all remember that adding or subtracting fractions requires a common denominator. And you want to find the least common denominator because that's going to save you time and effort with regard to your simplification in the end. So the LCD, or least common denominator, is the smallest number that is divisible by all denominators. The LCD is the LCM of all denominators. Now, let me kind of explain this. A lot of students get confused when you start talking about LCD and LCM and GCF and GCD. They always get those confused for the first part of kind of their math career. So the LCM is the least common multiple. So you have two, three, four numbers, whatever it is, and you want to find the least common multiple. When we talk about the least common denominator, that's when we're working with fractions, and we just take the denominators, and we find the least common multiple of the denominators, and that is the LCD. So you can see how the LCM and the LCD are related. Now, the greatest common factor, or the greatest common divisor, those are the same thing, okay? If something is a factor, it's also a divisor. So when we talk about that, we're looking for a number that is the largest factor, or the largest divisor, of a group of numbers. Now, the way they're different is that the GCF or the GCD is going to generally be a smaller number. And the LCM or the LCD is going to be a larger number. So let's revisit real quick with this example with adding fractions. So I have something like 3 tenths plus 7 fifteenths. Now, we know that we can't just add across like we do with multiplication. 3 plus 7 is 10. 10 plus 15 is 25. You know, I see students do that. That's wrong. That is wrong. We need to have a common denominator before we start. And the most efficient common denominator is the least common denominator. So the LCD, or the least common denominator. And this is equal to the least common multiple of the denominator. So of 10 and 15. Now hopefully you remember how to do this from pre-algebra. But if you don't, you basically just factor each number. So for 10, it's 5 times 2. 5 is prime and so is 2. For 15, it's what? It's 5 times 3. 5 is prime and so is 3. Now, each prime factor from every prime factorization is going to go in your list when you build it. The only thing is, if you have a duplicate prime factor, it's only going to go in the largest number of times it occurs in either of the factorizations. So, in other words, I have 5 and I have 2. I have 5 and I have 3. So 5 occurs in each prime factorization. The largest number of repeats or the largest number of occurrences in any of the prime factorizations is 1. I just have 1 here and I have 1 here. So I'm just going to put 1 in, 1 factor of 5 in, when I build that LCM or LCD or however you want to think about it. Now I'm going to multiply by, I have a 2 here, no 2 over here, so I just throw it in there. I have a 3 here, no 3 over here, so I just throw that in there. So the LCD... Again, is the LCM the least common multiple of 10 and 15, and that's 5 times 2, which is 10, times 3, which is 30. So once I have found that, I go through and I rewrite each fraction as an equivalent fraction where 30 is the denominator. So in other words, with 3 tenths, I would multiply the numerator by 3 and also the denominator. Remember, I'm just multiplying by a complicated form of 1, so I'm not changing the value, I'm just changing what it looks like. Then plus, we have 7 fifteenths, and this is multiplied by 2 over 2. And so this is equal to 3 times 3 is 9, over 10 times 3, that's 30. Then plus, 7 times 2 is 14, over 15 times 2, that's 30. And then 9 plus 14 is going to be 23. So we end up with 23 over 30 as my answer. And that can't be simplified any further. Okay, so we know how to find the LCD with regard to regular fractions. It's going to get a little bit more complicated 
when we start thinking about rational expressions because we have some messy variables involved, right? So it's a little bit more complex, but the general idea is the same. Now, before I move on, I just want to show you so that I settle all confusion that this is not the same as the GCF. Now, notice how you have the number 10 and you have the number 15. Now, the LCD or the LCM is a larger number. 30 is the smallest positive number that is divisible by both 15 and 10, meaning I divide 30 by 15, I get two no remainder. I divide 30 by 10, I get three no remainder, okay? If we talk about the greatest common factor or the greatest common divisor, this is equal to what? It's gonna be a smaller number because we're looking for the largest number that each of these numbers is divisible by. So it's kind of the same process. You factor each number to start but all you're gonna do is look for what's common to both, okay? So I can only put something in the greatest common factor listing if it's common to everything. In this case, I don't have a two that's common to everything. I don't have a three that's common to everything. The only thing that's common to both is five, and so my greatest common factor is a five. 10 divided by five is two no remainder. 15 divided by five is three no remainder. So you see that the greatest common factor, or again, the greatest common divisor is a smaller number and the LCD or LCM is a larger number. So that's one of the tricks I used to remember. It was taught to me by a teacher back when I was in eighth grade. But it's something that you should think about because a lot of students really struggle with this definition between, again, the GCF and the GCD, same thing, and then the LCD, the least common denominator, which is the LCM of the denominators. So let's look at one more example with fractions real quick just to kind of get our feet going. We have 11 24ths minus 9 20ths. So again, if I want the LCD, this is the least common multiple of these two denominators, so of 24 and 20. So what do I do? I factor 24, and I can do four times six, four is two times two, six is two times three. For 20, I'll do five times four, four is two times two. So now, if I build my list, every prime factor from each prime factorization is gonna go in there, I'm just paying attention for duplicate prime factors. So with two, I have one, two, three of those here, and I have one, two of those here. So when I build my list, how many am I gonna put in here? Well, I'm gonna put three. I go with the largest number of repeats from either prime factorization. That occurs here, I have three of them, so I'm gonna put two times two times two, or eight. Again, where students make a mistake is they throw all of them in there. And that's going to give you a common multiple, but it's not going to be the least common multiple. And that's what you're looking for to reduce the amount of work when you go to simplify. All right, so now the next thing is I have a 3, not common to both, so I'm going to throw that in there. And then I have a 5, not common to both, so I'm just going to throw that in there. So now we just multiply. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. 24 times 5 is 120. So that's your LCD or LCM. Now... If we wanted to find the GCF, the greatest common factor, or the greatest common divisor, what would that be? Well, when we build that list, it's only going to be numbers in the prime factorizations that's common to everything. The only thing we have here that's common to everything is two. Now I have two factors of two here, and again, I have one, two, three factors of two here. With the GCF, it's gotta be common to everything, so it's gonna be two factors of two that's gonna go into the GCF, and so two factors of two is four. So the greatest common factor is four. Again, this is a smaller number than these two, and then the LCD or LCM is a larger number than these two. That's how you kinda of get an understanding of it. 24 divided by four is six, no remainder. 20 divided by four is five, no remainder. With this one, 120 divided by 24 is five, no remainder, and 120 divided by 20 is six, no remainder. So you can see the difference between the two. Now let's go ahead and execute this problem just for the sake of completeness. We know what the LCD is, so let's transform each fraction. So we'd have 11 over 24. We'd multiply this by five over five, and then minus nine over 20, and we'd multiply this by six over six. So I'd end up with 55 over 120 minus 54 over 120, and this would give me 1 over 120 as my answer, and I can't simplify that any further. So again, similarly, when we work with rational expressions, 
we need to have a common denominator to add or subtract. It's going to be the same process. Again, it's going to be messier because we have a lot of variables involved. So to find the LCD for a group of rational expressions, we're going to factor all denominators completely. Just like if I'm looking for the LCD for a group of numbers, I'm going to factor the denominators completely. I'm getting it down to the prime factorization of each number. Then I'm going to list each different denominator factor. When a factor occurs in more than one factorization, list the largest number of repeats, okay, there it goes again, among all factorizations. So again, this is the same process that we use when we're thinking about numbers. If I have a prime factor of two in one prime factorization and a prime factor of two in another one, I'm looking for the largest number of repeats between those two factorizations to put that in when I build my list. All right, then the last step is just to multiply the factors to obtain the LCD. So again, same process as when we work with fractions, but it's just gonna be a little bit more messy, a little bit more time consuming, a little bit more tedious for the simple fact that we have variables involved. All right, so let's start out with these two rational expressions. We have 13 over 21 X cubed, and we have seven over 12 X to the fifth power. So I just wanna find the LCD. So I'm working with the denominators. So the LCD, is what? It's the LCM of 21 X cubed and of 12 X to the fifth power. So pretty easy for the number parts. We already know how to do that, right? We would just say, okay, well, 21 is what? It's three times seven and 12 is four times three. Four is two times two. All right, so to build the number part, what would I do? I list every prime factor. I just watch out for duplicates. If I have a duplicate prime factor, meaning it occurs in more than one prime factorization, I'm looking for the largest number of repeats. So I have a three here and here. It occurs only once in each. So I'm just gonna put one in here, not two. I have a seven here, no seven over here. I have two twos in here. So I'm gonna throw both of those in there. And we know that's four. So the number part is three times seven, which is 21 times four, which is 84. So let's just go ahead and write 84 there. And then what about the variable part? Well, do I really need to go through and say, well, I have X times X times X, and then I have X times X times X times X times X. Again, I want the largest number of repeats. So if it's the same variable, now I'm just gonna go with the largest exponent. Remember, when we talked about the greatest common factor, we went with the smallest exponent. Okay, now we're going with the largest exponent. So the largest exponent is the five, so it's gonna be 84x to the fifth power. That constitutes the largest number of repeats for either of the prime factorizations. So your LCD here is 84x to the fifth power. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have three x minus two over 25x squared, and then we also are looking at negative seven over 10x to the fourth power. So again, my LCD, my LCD is the LCM of these two denominators. So 25x squared and then 10x to the fourth power. So again, we know how to do the number part. We can almost do that in our head. We know 25 is what? It's five times five. And 10 is five times two. So I know that I have a duplicate prime factor of five. It occurs twice here, so one and then two, two factors of five here, only one here. So I go with the largest number of repeats and that's in the prime factorization of 25. So I'm gonna throw two of those in here, five times five is 25. And then I'm gonna throw a two in there, so times two. 25 times two is 50, so the number part is a 50. Now for the variable part, I have x squared and I have x to the fourth power. Again, I wanna go with the largest exponent on x and the reason for that is that's gonna be the largest number of repeats between the two prime factorizations. If I had x squared, it's x times x, so two of those. If I have x to the fourth power, I have x times x times x times x. This is the largest number. This is the largest number, again, as given by the largest exponent. So I just use that. So this is 50x to the fourth power. All right, so let's take a look at another. We have seven x cubed minus 11 over seven x squared plus 21 x. And then we have negative four x to the fifth power minus 13 over five x squared plus 15 x. Now, for this one, you might start thinking about, hey, this is really complicated, what do we do? 
Again, you got to factor everything completely. So I want the LCD of these two guys. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor them. So from this first guy here, I can pull out a 7x. So I can pull out a 7x. And then what's left inside is x plus 3. From this guy right here, I can pull out a 5x. So I pull out a 5x. And what's left is x plus 3. So now I'm looking at what's common. So I have x plus 3 and I have x plus 3. So when I build my LCD, my LCD, I'm going to have a factor of x plus 3 in there. It occurs only once in each, so that's all I'm going to do. Now, each one has an x. I have an x here and I have an x. In each case, it's only one. So I'm going to put one x in there. And then I have a 7 and I have a 5. Each of those is a prime number. 7 times 5 is 35. So what this is going to be, it's going to be 35x, 35x times x plus 3, that quantity. And I would just leave it just like this in factored form. You can go through and multiply it if you want, but usually when you're finding an LCD, it's just better to leave it in factored form in case you need to do some canceling later on. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have 2x cubed minus 5 over 5x minus 10. Then we have 11x minus 4 over 6x minus 12. So again, I want to look at these two denominators, and I want to factor them completely. So for this one, I could pull out a 5, and I would have x minus 2. For this one, I could pull out a 6, and I would have x minus 2. So you can see you have x minus 2 and x minus 2. So for the LCD, you're going to have what? You have a 5, and you have a 6. 5 times 6 is going to be what? That's going to be 30. And then you have that x minus 2. It only occurs once in each factorization. So that's all I need to do when I put it in here. I've got one factor of x minus 2, and then I've got one factor of 5 and one factor of 6, because 6 is 2 times 3 and 5 is prime. So 5 times 2 times 3 would give me 30. That's how I got that. And then I've got my one factor of x minus 2. So you get 30 times the quantity x minus 2. And again, I would leave this in factored form. All right, let's take a look at one more problem. I think you get the general idea. So we have n minus 5. I can't really factor that. I'll just write n minus 5. I have 3n cubed plus 15n squared. So I could pull out a 3n squared. And I would get n plus 5. And then over here, I have n squared minus 25. That's the difference of two squares. So this is n minus 5 times n plus 5. So for my LCD, what do I have? I have n minus 5 here and also here, and then I have n plus 5 here, and also here. So each only occurs once. This occurs once, this occurs once, so I would just put 1 in there. And then this occurs once, and this occurs once, so I would just put 1 in there. And then we have this 3n squared that's got to go in, so let me kind of scooch this down. So we like it to be in the front, that's just more traditional. And so our LCD is 3n squared times the quantity n minus 5, times the quantity n plus 5. 